Hey guys, Meteor Rebel Chris Tomer here. Let's talk some mountain weather. My first stop is going to be the High Sierra of California. This is the very top of Mammoth Mountain Ski Area. Notice it is socked in up there at the top. There is moisture here. Depending on your elevation, um, you're going to see snow if you're above 13,000 feet up there. That's really the rain snow line right now. So above that snow, below it, it's probably just going to be rain. But what do we have here? So you might remember yesterday we talked about that remnant area of low pressure, that tropical low. It was over Southern California yesterday. Now it has moved north and it's covering Central California and eventually parts of Northern California. And this is probably not the only tropical low that we're going to see move into California in the forecast. Here's radar. Um, so there's all the action on radar. There's our area of low pressure. It's dry up in the Pacific Northwest, dry in Idaho, Montana, and also in Wyoming. So let's zoom in on this, and boy, you can really see the circulation. There's our uh, tropical low. Look at all of this rain and even snow above 13,000 rotating around this area of low pressure this morning. And there's your uh, there's the high Sierra, so it's banking up against that. There's Tahoe up here. Now again, some of that is going to be snow at the very highest of elevations. All right, let me show you water vapor satellite imagery. This is another cool way to view this. And what you're looking at here is water vapor or moisture in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. So the oranges and the reds, drier air. Your moisture is right here in the whites and the blues and also over here. That's where a lot of the moisture is. So the key players, there's our remnant low pressure. Another one over here dip in the jet stream. So those are the two key features. You've got one low here and another one here. Um, but that may not be it. There's quite a bit of action in the forecast. In fact, take a look at my bullet points. <clears throat> Here's what I'm expecting. All right, so we talked about the, uh, the California tropical moisture. Now this is a really interesting feature. 921, 22, 23, a fast moving area of low pressure will dive down through Montana. Wyoming and then into Colorado. So basically on the uh, basically on the continental divide in east, that's where we're going to see quite a bit of impact. Uh, it's really going to feel like fall by the time we get to Monday. The official calendar start of Monday. Cooler temperatures, some wind, and maybe even some snow over the very highest peaks. You can see the timeline here for highest uh, highest odds of snow in Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and BC uh, over the very highest peaks. So the 9 20 21 22 event, you can see it right here. Um, that's the fast moving area of low pressure. And then there's a second low dip in the jet later in the month and then again early in October. So it's kind of like we had talked about the last few days. It does look like by the end of September into early October, the pattern is going to be quite a bit more active. Um, across the West once we get to that point. So let's dive into the forecast here. So this is a, these are forecast atmospheric pressure anomalies in the middle of the atmosphere. So up at about um, 18,000 feet, you're looking for um, areas of low pressure and areas of high pressure on this. So this is effective Tuesday, <clears throat> 923. And this is when that area of low pressure, this is that fast moving area of low pressure is diving down. Uh, right down the continental, the spine of the continental divide. Area of low pressure right there, coming out of Montana into Wyoming and into Colorado. And look at what we have here. Another remnant tropical low. And this one may feed some moisture into this flow, into the Inner Mountain West. So the two of these might actually have some interaction. And again, that's 922, 923, somewhere right in there. All right, let's move ahead. So this is 929, so another week into the future here. Effective 929, and look at what we've got. Another dip in the jet, and another drop in pressures here over pretty much the entire Inner Mountain West. And what you're looking at here, this is an AI chart. So this is an AI forecast off the European model. Just so I wanna be clear on that. I'll try to identify that when I'm using these. So this is an AI look, and what it thinks is you've got an area of low pressure here and one down here, dip in the jet stream, and potentially, if this plays out, you're looking at cooler than normal temperatures and potentially some snow over the highest peaks, maybe BC, Alberta, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, maybe even into Colorado and Utah. So we'll have to wait and see if that plays out. Let's go, um, let's go into early October. So this is effective 10-4 on uh, this is October 4th and look at this is also <clears throat> an AI chart as well 
just uh, so we're clear. But here's what it thinks. So you've got a drop in pressures, oh, a pretty significant drop in pressures over the uh, the west, and especially up here in the Pacific Northwest. If this were to play out, we'd be looking at cooler than normal temperatures, along with another shot of snow for the highest peaks. And this would include the Pacific Northwest, BC, Alberta, and a lot of the inner mountain. I mean, you can see where we've got these drops in pressures, and that's going to move through. That's going to translate through those areas. So. Again, this lends some, some confidence to the idea that it's going to be more active later in the month into early October. All right, let's uh, look at a time height forecast. So I'm particularly interested in this Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, 9, 20, 21, 22 event with this area of low pressure. This is effective for Cameron Pass up in northern Colorado, in the northern mountains of Colorado. Uh, and really, when you look at where the moisture could be with this this quick hitter, this quick low, it's going to be on the Front Range High Peaks, the Continental Divide of Colorado, east. East. So Cameron would, would be included within this. And you read these charts down here. You start on this side, and you go in the opposite direction. That takes you into the future. And what I'm looking for is all of this, the green. That's going to be your moisture or higher relative humidities in the atmosphere. And you're looking at a slice of the atmosphere. This is up at about jet stream level right here. So where I'm seeing moisture is basically on the 20th and on the 21st as well. So in this time frame right here, this is the time frame to watch for potentially as that low comes through, we could have some precipitation develop over the highest peaks of Colorado and Wyoming as well um, as this thing comes through. Um, let me show you the extended snow forecast. Now this is for Breckenridge in Colorado, but notice it does ramp up, it accelerates up the chances of snow, uh, 21, 22, 23, and then again 27, 28, 29, then potentially again in early October. And this actually delivers or forecasts over five inches of snow for the Breckenridge area. And Breckenridge is high. I mean, this is really representative of what you might expect in the 10-mile range there um, in, in Colorado. Um, let me show you um, the 10-day snow forecast. So this will take us all the way out through the end of the month. And what this is showing is you've got some snow over pretty much all the zones in Colorado, maybe a little bit over the high Uintas uh, of Utah and some in, in Wyoming as well. You've got some up here and then through the Bighorns and down through the Wind Rivers, Yellowstone maybe even, uh, up towards Big Sky and the Absaroka Beartooths. Uh, a little bit up here across the northern chain up towards uh, the Canadian border and certainly you've got snow up here in BC, Alberta. And a little bit, and, and you can kind of see it right here across the high Sierra, that would be from the remnant tropical moisture. And that's throwing out maybe a few inches of accumulation above 13,000 feet. So that's kind of what we have to look forward to. Um, <clears throat> let's look at the jet stream. This will really show you how this plays out. So again, this is up at about 30,000 feet. The colored areas here represent wind speeds at that level. And so for example, that's probably 40 to 50 mile an hour winds right there. Um, okay, let me push this ahead, and you can kind of see, we'll start this at lunchtime today. You can kind of see where the jet has sort of is supporting this remnant tropical low right there in, in uh, California. All right, let's move into the future. Here we are lunchtime on Saturday, September 20th. Lunchtime right here on Sunday. And I want to uh, just annotate this just a little bit. So you've got some southern branch energy right here. Um, then you've got this. Look at this dip in the jet stream right here up in the Pacific Northwest. So a couple of interesting features right there. All right, let's move ahead. Here we are on lunchtime Monday. All right, there's our quick hitting area of low pressure that's going to slide down through the Continental Divide. So it's going to take a track basically like this. And again, that's the one that could deliver a little bit of snow. And it, so it's got a little bit of southern branch contribution. Pretty interesting to note. Uh, all right, here we are on Tuesday in the uh, lunchtime, Tuesday lunchtime. So still looking at some jet energy right here. That's probably a 90 mile an hour jet over the top of Colorado, up at about 30,000 feet. And the area of low pressure is sitting right here, so it's supporting it. And look what we've got over here. That's the next remnant tropical low 
that we talked about. And so that may very well feed a little bit of moisture into this flow pattern right here between 21, 22, and also 23. <clears throat> All right, let's move ahead. Here we are lunchtime Wednesday, lunchtime Thursday, lunchtime Friday, lunchtime Saturday. Here we are early on Sunday, September 28th. So a couple of things. Look at the net, the new jet stream coming in here. Pretty powerful jet. That likely will buckle to the south, and that may open the door for more activity late in September into early October. One more fun little chart here. Let me clear that, and then we'll call it a day. But this is a, this is a pretty fun one when these come out. So this is the 45-day snow forecast off the European. 45 days. So you got to use these with a true grain of salt. But what does it indicate? Really what you want to look at with these overall is just what's the pattern, right? Where are the anomalies? Big anomaly right here, right? This indicates the potential for uh, several, maybe even, uh, areas of low pressure or cold fronts that come through um, this area. I mean, this even shows snow over Denver in the front range. Now, and this runs all the way out to the second, the first and second of November. So that's possible. Snow in Denver, snow across the front range would be possible once we get into um, you know, certainly that October time frame. But that's what it's showing here. Quite a bit in October um, in, Colorado, in Colorado and snow up here. The Tetons, the Wind Rivers, snow, a little bit of snow in Utah, some snow up here in BC, Alberta, nothing in the Northeast. So uh, the pattern, if this were to play out, would probably look something like this. That would be your jet, your jet stream forecast, if if that were to play out. But again, use these 45 dayers with a real grain of salt. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. I always appreciate it. On this Friday, take care and have a great day.